So what is a people pleaser? A people pleaser, in my opinion, is somebody who cares too much about what other people think. And they care so much that they're just basically willing to go through life repressing themselves and doing what everybody else wants them to do. And the end goal of doing what everybody wants them to do is to make people like them so then they will hopefully feel good and fulfilled. And I think that's the biggest lie of being in that people-pleasing mentality is that doing it will ultimately help you or fulfill you. And in my experience, it's just not true. Um, people-pleasing, basically you're giving up your own desires, needs, and wants. So you're basically not living your most authentic life. In the case of the INFJ personality, living your authentic self is, I think, vitally important to feeling okay about yourself. If you're constantly repressing your own wants and needs, you're gonna end up, I think, with low self-confidence. You're not gonna trust yourself. And you know you might be depressed and you're not really gonna know what's wrong but all you're doing is trying to make everybody else happy all the time. So I'm gonna target this video more towards the INFJ personality, but I think it would really apply to any personality that has a high level of empathy. So a people pleaser basically, their goal is to make everybody else happy. And with the INFJ personality, the reason why we might do this is because we have extroverted feeling, we want other people to feel good and happy because then once they are happy, we become happy. It's sort of like, because we absorb other people's feelings. And that's really what empathy is. You're putting yourself in another person's shoes and almost feeling what they're feeling. So if somebody else feels good, you know, you feel good. You don't have to worry about them, I guess. Um, but if, let's say somebody else feels sad or they're unhappy or they're not really having a good experience with something, you know, that you're providing them with. Say you're trying to provide them a good experience and they're not happy. That doesn't feel good for us because we have high levels of extroverted feeling and we really want to make that person happy in order to make ourselves feel happy. So I think in a, a healthy form, empathy is a good thing because it basically allows you to get inside other people's heads a bit figure out what is wrong and then help them. And as long as you are a healthy person that you're taking care of your own needs, that's great. Um, where the problem occurs though, is if basically you're doing that while suppressing or ignoring your own needs or doing that to such an extent that you're, you're just forgetting yourself and you're neglecting yourself or you're actually letting this person take advantage of you or abuse you. Uh, in the case of like with narcissists. Narcissists love to grab on to empathetic people and will take advantage of them and basically suck the life out of them. Here's these people that want to take things, they need things, and then here's this empathetic person that comes along that just wants to give. So it's a perfect match, basically like a parasite and a host, and, and the one person just feeds into the other person until that person is just sort of left completely depleted. I feel like there's sort of two parts to this about people pleasing. One is maybe pleasing the people that are around you, the people that are in your life, your relationships. Um, the other thing is basically people pleasing people that you don't even know or you don't even like or just the general culture trying to fit in in order to make people like you. And it's more of a perceived thing at that point. It's like, oh, I don't want to... You know, there's this person over here that I know doesn't like the specific thing I'm doing. Oh, they might talk bad about me. Oh, I better not do it. Um, so then you don't do it. Here's the thing about INFJs. We don't often fully fit in with normal cultural ideas, I should say. Or, you know, we can fit in. But a lot of times we have new ideas that we want to explore. Or certain things don't make sense. So we want to point those things out and um, talk about those things. Or we want to create new ideas or new businesses or create art or write. There's a lot of INFJ writers. Um, we want to basically put things out in the world that kind of convey our ideas. But if you're too worried about what people think, you're basically not going to be able to put that authentic thing out because you're going to be too worried about what people think. And um, there's a video actually Frank James did not too long ago and it was called, I think, the INFJ burn down. It was sort of what this is. It's basically like, I guess it's really common. INFJs will write something, maybe they write a post or write a comment or you know, maybe they do some kind of art, maybe they'll take a picture or whatever. They'll put it out in the world 
and they immediately take it down. They get super self-conscious, or maybe one person says something that shakes their confidence. Maybe one, they get one uh, person saying they don't like it or some kind of critical comment, and um, the, basically the burn down happens where you just like burn it to the ground, get rid of that thing, uh, get, basically stop all the exposure because you don't want to be exposed to the world. So think about caring too much about what people think that it's just ridiculous. So, you know, you've got this idea in your head that there's all these people out there and they're thinking bad things about you and, um, they, you know, they don't want you to do certain things. Or, and, and, and maybe it's true. Um, let's say you're an artist that wants to push some kind of boundary, let's say. But when you do, when you kind of cross that line, all of a sudden you get a little bit of pushback. Maybe you start hearing about it. Maybe your family doesn't like it. Maybe, um, maybe certain friends, or they, you know, they start asking these kind of questions, or, and it makes you nervous, and you get really kind of worked up, and then you pull back, and you don't do those things anymore because um, you don't want to shake things up. You, you want people to like you. You don't want to screw that up. So repressing yourself to meet the needs of random people, like let's say you get a comment on the internet, they don't like it or they don't like you or this is stupid. I had somebody say uh, just recently, they thought I was pretentious. The old me would have just been really her upset by that. Been, my anxiety would have gone through the roof and I probably would have like just deleted the whole video. The new, I mean, I've been working on this. And it's like I've been working on this hard for a couple years. I think the new me is, is still, it's still an issue. It doesn't bother me the way it used to. And it's such a good feeling, to be honest, because what, what is it at its core? It's that my self-confidence isn't wrapped up in what these people think of me. My self-confidence should be okay, regardless of whether I get bad comments or regardless of if I get good comments. So that's, that's the flip side of it, right? So a lot of people, they love the good comments, the, the reassurance, Maybe people, maybe somebody says something, oh, you're a really good person, or I really like this thing you made, or this photograph you made was amazing. Um, and then they get all like sort of puffed up from that, and that's where they get their, their self-assurance. And if they don't have reassurance, they will start to feel like they're doing a bad job. I used to be like that. The thing about caring too much about what people think is you also have to almost not care about the positive stuff. If you need people to say positive things to you in order for you to feel okay, then that kind of means that your confidence isn't in the right place, it's in other people. So then conversely, when they say bad things about you, you're gonna feel bad. So the end goal is to feel okay no matter what people think. To be confident in yourself, confident in who you are, confident in the work you create, confident in your ideas, and actually get to a point where you don't have to be defensive, you don't have to defend yourself, um, and, and you just feel fine regardless. You know, so the second category of people that you might people please to are the people that are directly in your life, like your relationships. This is a bit more complicated because in your relationships, you want to be empathetic to the people that you love. Uh, you want to help the people that are in your life. You, and that's what a relationship is. I mean, you don't have a very good relationship if you just think about yourself all day long. So that's the sort of the paradox of this. However, I find that most INFJs, because we sort of lean towards that whole extroverted feeling people-pleasing mode where we want to help people, we want to you know, feed into the people that are around us, including our relationships, that sometimes we can go overboard. So we're like a pendulum. And over here you have like no empathy. And over here you have like almost overboard empathy to the point where you are sacrificing yourself un in an unhealthy way. So you really kind of want to be in the middle where you're not sacrificing your own self. You're taking care of yourself, but you're also able to help people be empathetic and, you know, feel for them. But the problem is if your pendulum is swung so far that you're just being unhealthy and just sacrificing yourself for everybody, then what you really need to do is almost pull that back. Take care of yourself first. Be a little more selfish. And that might sound horrible to some people because they're like, oh, I don't want to be selfish. But what I, what I mean is if you're so extreme in the people-pleasing mode, 
if you act a little selfish, you're basically just going to be pulled back to center a little bit. You'll still be a, a wonderful, empathetic person, but now you might be taking care of yourself first. So here's just a really simple example. Let's say you're with a new friend. Maybe you don't really know this person super well. You kind of want to impress them. You want them to be happy. So let's say you need to go out for food. Um, a really confident person might just suggest a place. Hey, I know this really good place that's over there. Let's go get some food. But a people pleaser might look at that a little different and almost they want this person to be happy so bad. They might start off with, well, do you want to get some food? And the person says, mm, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, well, um, you know, where would you like to eat? And then, and then you might throw out some suggestions. Well, we've got this over here or this over here. And you kind of give them some options. I find a really good exercise Instead of just presenting people with, you know, multiple options and seeing which one they choose, pick the best option and present it. Say, I would like to uh, try this new restaurant down the street. I've heard it's really good. Would you like to go? And more often than not, people actually will really respect you for that. And that's the ironic thing about being a people pleaser. People almost respect people that are strong and confident. So here we are sacrificing ourselves not being assertive, not telling people what we really want, letting people walk on us, letting people, you know, be the ones that make all the decisions, suppressing our wants and needs in order to make these people happy. And in the end, people don't really respect you for that. People almost disrespect you. It's sort of that nice guy syndrome. Being a nice guy or a nice girl by itself isn't going to make people like you. You have to have confidence. People respect that. So, that's the first thing I would recommend is practice making decisions for other people. So here is the clincher about worrying too much about what people think. You cannot be both authentic and a people pleaser. They are opposites. And if as an INFJ you need authenticity to feel good about yourself, if you are constantly people pleasing and not being authentic, that is going to be harmful to you. And the reality is, is if you are doing anything worthwhile in life, anything at all, running a business, being an artist, um, writing, um, dancing, like I just pick anything, anything worthwhile, you know, maybe not watching Netflix because that's not worthwhile, but anything that creates something, anything that creates value, anything that pushes boundaries or things that puts forth ideas, somebody's not going to like that. You have to get used to the fact that some people won't like what you're doing. And the funny thing about it is, if you're doing something and nobody dislikes it, then you're probably not doing the right thing. Somebody should dislike every good work. It's something to remember. If you are getting haters, you might be on the right track. You know, you got 50 people telling you that they like what you're doing and you got one or two haters. You know, that's a sign that maybe you're onto something. You want to have haters. Haters are often the people that are kind of holding on to tradition or holding on to something like this is the way this should be done and here you are pushing a boundary or doing something new and sort of those traditional people, the people that really value tradition and hierarchies and bureaucracies, those people are often not really going to like what you're doing if you're pushing a boundary in a new direction. So it's just the fact of the matter that people aren't going to like what you're doing and you can almost use it as a sign that you're on the right track. And that's how I choose to look at it. It's like, oh yes, a negative comment. That means that I'm actually doing something here. I've got a thousand likes on this video and 16 dislikes. I'm not going to feel bad about those 16 dislikes because that's ridiculous here. I actually have some people that appreciate what I'm doing here. I'm not going to get too wrapped up in it to the point where I start, you know, changing my message and changing what I'm doing to meet the needs of these people and actually suppressing myself. But basically, I'm also not going to be upset that there are some people that don't like it. All right, let's say you are a people pleaser. You care way too much about what people think. You're not doing what you you know you need to do. You're not doing what you want to do. You just feel depressed. You're sitting in your house. You feel like hiding. You know, I've, I've gone through lots of moments like that. Um, let's say you are that person. What do you do about it? How do you start not caring about what people think? And I don't want to make this sound like it's easy because it's not. It's literally the hardest battle that I've fought in my life and I've been working on it for like 15 years. I, you know, I started off, you know, coming out of high school, university. I was 
I think I had low self-confidence. I didn't trust my thoughts. I didn't trust myself. I had all kinds of ideas. They seemed countercultural. I didn't trust it. And I was too scared to put a lot of stuff out into the world because I was just too scared about what people think. So I want to say that first. This is not something that's easy. But I think with a few tools, it is something that you can start to work on. So the way I would liken it to is going to the gym. So let's say you've never worked out in your life. You can't expect just to walk into the gym and pick up the heaviest weights and start benching like you've been you know, working out for 10 years. So those people in the gym that can lift heavy weights, the reason why they can do that is because they've been doing it. They've been practicing. And they haven't just been talking about it. They've been actually doing it. And it's the same thing here. You have to practice. And just talking about it isn't enough. You know, Just talking about going to the gym, is that going to make you stronger? No. Um, you know, what about sitting on the couch and just thinking about it? And you know, is that going to make you stronger? No, because you're not actually doing it. What about reading a book or watching a video like this one about working out? Let's say you watch a workout video on YouTube, or you're just sitting there in your chair. You know, that's not going to make you stronger. That's going to give you the tools that if you want to start, you can, but you still have to walk through the door of the gym. You have to pick up a weight and you have to push it or pull it or lift it. And doing that will make your muscles stronger. And if you do that day in, day out, or at least a few days a week for a year, two years, three years, you're going to be pretty good at it. You're going to be pretty strong. Your muscles are going to look like you are strong. So it's the same thing with this. You can't sit around and just talk about you know, trying to work on not caring about what people think. I really think, and this is a little bit scary, and it's something that I've struggled with, I think you actually have to practice. You have to practice doing things that you know people won't like. And that might sound funny, but you have to actually pick some things and do them. So let's start with some really simple ways that you can practice this. Um, let's say somebody sends you a text message or you know, calls you, or let's say you've got like a really leechy person in your life or a narcissistic person, and they're always trying to make you do things and uh, get stuff out of you, and you're always bending over backwards to satisfy this person. And you know, you know you shouldn't do it, and you feel abused. So next time that person messages you, or somebody that, I mean, it could, could be just anybody. It's just somebody wants you to do something that you don't want to do. It's simple. You don't need to ask why you don't want to do it. You just know, I don't really want to do that. It's like, hey, can you come over to my house and do this for me? Uh, you know, I don't want to do that. So as soon as you know that you don't want to do it, here's how you can practice. A people pleaser will say something, you know, well, a true people pleaser will just do it, even though they don't want to. They'll just be, not, don't rock the boat. We don't want to mess with this person. Let's just go do it. And you might even feel good. And, and that's, that's the funny thing about people pleasing is in the end you're like, oh, I feel good. You know, I did the thing. I'm helping somebody. Um, but meanwhile, you just completely went against what you thought is right. You, you did something that you didn't even want to do. So what you can do is tell the person no. And do it in a polite way. And don't make an excuse. Don't, don't pretend that you're busy um, and you don't really have time. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't have time to do that. Sorry, I can't help you. But it's, it's not true. They're just, they're not taking ownership of it and say, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that right now because it doesn't align with my priorities. You could say something like that, but it's a really good way of taking ownership of the fact that you don't want to do that, but you're not rude about it. You're not mean. It's showing some confidence and it's, it's possible that the person might even respect you for it. You know, like a narcissist that doesn't like hearing the word no. So that's a, a characteristic of narcissistic personality disorder is they really don't like no. And if you say no to them, they might freak out. And it's actually a great test for somebody. If you say no and they freak out, you know, that's a warning sign. You know, a normal person should be able to get a polite no and be okay with it. So here's another just subtle way you can in practice. And so all these things are basically about doing things that you know other people might not like. Just as an exercise, I know this might make you feel like a jerk, but say you're driving on a single lane road and you're the type of person who would be bothered if you were you know, inconveniencing somebody behind you. Just slow down a bit. Slow right down to exactly the speed limit. And so you've got this person behind you now. You know they want you to go faster, that you know they're in a hurry, but you just try to be comfortable with yourself and drive along. Don't worry that they're mad at you. You, know, you have to be comfortable with the fact that you know 
they're mad at you. You know they want you to go faster, but you know what? You're not gonna do it. You're doing the speed limit. And it's just an exercise. It's just an exercise in being in that place where somebody else isn't happy with what you're doing and it's about being comfortable in yourself enough to not worry about it too much. So a few other ways you can practice. All right, let's say you're into fashion and let's say you're the type of person who likes to wear crazy things or cool stuff or new trends or whatever, but maybe you get a little self-conscious with some of the stuff that you pick out and you have these things that you've bought and maybe you never even wear them out because you're just too worried about what people think and it's, you know, you don't like that attention on you or maybe somebody might think you're weird or they criticize you. So pick out the weirdest thing you have and just wear it and walk down the street. Um, you know, intentionally buy something that is just a little weird or a little out there or a little outlandish. You want that discomfort and you want to be able to walk down that street. You want to be able to feel good about yourself even though you know that other people might not be okay with what you're doing. Or you know, another thing you could do is say you're just a uh, one of those people that's always really put together. Perfect clothes, you know, you got the nicest shoes, you're always put together, you got the cleanest haircut, you know, you're obsessed with what people think to the point where you look gray all the time and you don't go into public looking like a slob. You know what? Just dress up like a slob one day. Put some sweatpants on, don't do your hair. You know, maybe go out without makeup, walk through the mall. Maybe be okay with the fact that you're not like the best looking person in the mall. People don't look at you and go, wow, look at that amazing person. Just be, because this is the other thing about it. You want to practice not getting compliments. You want to practice being okay with yourself even if you're not getting complimented or reassured all the time. So can you walk into public and be okay with yourself even if you're dressed like a slob? You can take this one step further. Look inside yourself. Find that thing that you really want to do. Or maybe it's something you've always wanted to do and you've never had the courage to do. Um, you know, in my case, it's, it's been, always been photography. I like to take certain types of pictures. Um, I like darker things, moodier things, things with meaning. Something that I've always struggled with is, oh, this, maybe this picture shows a little too much. And the thing is, the people around me are always confirming this. They're like, oh, that's, that's really pushing it. You know, that's bad you shouldn't do that. Like, what if this person sees it? Or, uh, you know, and I've, oh, I, I, I would post things, I take them down. Or there's things I've taken that I never even post because I just know that people aren't going to be okay with it. So look inside your, yourself and find that thing that you've always wanted to do and start doing it. And don't go all the way right away. Like, say you really like to, say you're a really good painter and you want to paint something Let's say you wanted to paint a naked person. <laughs> a lot of people have a problem with nudity, so it's a good example. You start just pushing a boundary. That's what you want to do. Um, let's say you wanted to start a business, but it was a certain type of business that maybe people won't agree with. Maybe, maybe your family isn't okay with a certain type of thing, um, but it's something you're really passionate about. You know, just take a step in that direction and make sure everybody knows it. And you know, they might be a little like, hmm, what's this boy? Oh, they might be a little tickled, I guess by your step forward. And that's, you just wanna make it a small little subtle step. Feel that pushback, feel that feeling that people maybe don't approve of what you're doing. And you wanna be okay with it. And it's gonna be really hard in the beginning to actually be okay with it. Because there might be people who are talking about you. Uh, there might be people who are talking about your back and they're, you know, they're, they don't like what you're doing. The thing is though, you really have to listen to yourself and dig deep inside yourself. Do you want to do this? Is this an authentic thing that you're putting through forward? Then you have to do it and just start in a subtle way. Put something out there, feel that tension. You know, it's funny. And as you do it, you're gonna have a lot of people that really like it. And then you're gonna have some people that don't. And the funny thing about people is this, they don't like change. I mean, I'm not all people, but a majority of people, it just seems like they don't like change and they, they don't like people to change. And once they sort of lock down what you are, they, people wanna put you into a box. And then once they have you in that box, they don't want you to leave the box because that's comfortable for them. You know, as soon as you start pushing outside that box, they're like, whoa, what is this? I'll give you an example. So do you remember when Miley Cyrus was, uh, she had this really pure image and, very wholesome. 
And then one day, I think maybe whatever that was, I mean, early, early 20s, she just switched into this like bad girl image and people just lost their minds. Uh, here's Hannah Montana, that was a character she played. Now all of a sudden she's riding on that wrecking ball nude. The funny thing is, is once people got used to Miley Cyrus like that, if she puts out a new video that it's just as shocking, people aren't really as shocked anymore, are they? So after people get used to her that way, if she continues to act like that, it's not surprising anymore, is it? So that's the funny thing. When you make these transitions, that's when usually people kind of freak out a bit. And that's the moment where you gotta hold strong. And I'm not saying you should be like Miley Cyrus. That's not what I'm saying. Because there's lots of ways that you could, um, you know, just starting businesses in certain industries or doing certain things. Let's say you see an opportunity or let's say it's just writing. You just wanna write and put your ideas out there and you wanna feel confident and not delete the, uh, delete the post. You wanna start small and just start practicing. It's called exposure therapy. And it's kinda of like the Stoics. You know, a sign of a great Stoic is they could walk down the street naked and feel no shame. And basically at that point, you're not a people pleaser anymore. If you can walk down the street, feel no shame, Maybe you're not a people pleaser, but if you're walking on the street, you're like, oh no, everybody's worried about me. I mean, could I walk on the street naked right now? No, I am not at that point. But I am working hard at trying to put forth my authentic self and not be stressed about it. So that's basically what I wanna say. It's about practice. You have to practice, just like when you go to the gym, you have to lift the weights. You can't just think about it. You actually have to practice. And as you go forward, you will get stronger, you'll become more confident, and you're gonna start doing those things that you really wanna do. And you can still be that empathetic person that's there for your relationships, there for your friends. But what you might find is as you start doing this, you might, lose some friends or you might lose some people that they just really don't like what you're doing. And that's because they're used to that old you that's, you know, meeting all their needs, doing, you know, telling them what they want to hear. And when you lose that people-pleasing attitude, you might not tell people exactly what they want to hear anymore. You know, you can, you want to be authentic to yourself and tell them what you think. Obviously, you want to be considerate in how you do that. You just don't walk around being a jerk. But the point of the matter is you're confident, you're strong, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, and you don't need to hide yourself. And that's really the goal. And then once you can get to that point, especially if you're an INFJ, I think this can open a whole world for you. And you can move forward with just, uh, I've, I've sort of found just lately that I do care a little less what people think. It feels good. Anyway, guys, I am glad you watched the video. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it. If you have any questions, just post them below. Um, you know, it really helped me actually if you clicked subscribe or like on the video or share it even. It helps other people find the content and um, uh, helps the channel grow a little bit. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks, have a great day.